but the augmentation of nine was not consulted with the DBM per DBM. Hindi pareho rin yung problema, Mr. President. Hindi na-consult yung agency. So who will implement this? Senate inquiry shows the lower house increased the budget for assistance to local government units without consulting the Department of Budget and Management. I don't see any congressperson na may ganun ka laking increase. House Appropriations Committee denies pork barrel insertions in the 2019 proposed budget. And a consumer group claims some supermarkets are non-compliant to DTI's suggested retail price. Good evening. Other questionable issues surface in the continuing deliberations in the Senate on the 2019 proposed national budget. This includes the increase in the budget for assistance to local government units to more than 16 billion pesos in the General Appropriations Bill approved by the lower house. Nel Maribo tells us why. Senator Panfilo Laxon raises more questions as the Senate resumed today its deliberation on the 3.75 trillion pesos proposed 2019 national budget. Laxon pointed out that in the general appropriations bill transmitted from the lower house, the budget for assistance to local government units was increased to 16 billion pesos. This is much higher than the amount of 7 billion pesos stated in the national expenditure program initially proposed by the Duterte administration. According to Senate Committee on Finance Chairperson Senator Loren Legarda, the lower house increased the said amount without consulting the Department of Budget and Management. But the augmentation of nine was not consulted with the DBM per DBM. Hindi pareho rin yung problema, Mr. President. Hindi na-consult yung agency. So who will implement this? And how would DBM monitor something that they... How they didn't know in the first place. DBM is the supervising agency when it comes to the release of financial assistance fund for local government units. The fund can be used as support in programs and projects of LGUs, such as providing assistance for indigent families, including medical, burial, education, food and cash for work. The budget can also be used to procure ambulances, mini dump trucks and fire trucks, as well as fund road rehabilitation and repair works, public market, evacuation centers, and sport facilities. Senator Legarda, however, assures the fund is secured and will not be accessed by politicians, especially during the upcoming polls. The DILG comes in for the strict monitoring and implementation only of LGUs, not of lawmakers. They are barred from requesting for this. Legarda adds the DBM has tightened its requirements in releasing the said funds. Despite this, Senator Laxon will still push for the original version of the proposal to allocate 7 billion pesos for the LGU Assistance Fund. Nel Maribohok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The House Committee on Appropriations denies Senator Panfilo Laxon's allegation on the pork battle insertions in the 2019 proposed national budget. Laxon has earlier questioned the realignment of budget worth billions of pesos to some congressional districts in the House's version of the bill. Grace Gossian tells us why. The House Committee on Appropriations strongly denies there had been billions of pesos worth of insertions for two congressmen's pet project in the proposed 2019 national budget, as alleged by Senator Panfilo Laxon. Laxon specifically mentioned a more than 2 billion peso additional fund intended for the 2nd District of Pampanga. Though Laxon did not name the involved lawmaker, he was clearly pointing at House Speaker Gloria Arroyo's district in Pampanga. But Acting Committee Chairperson Maria Carmen Zamora's chesses, they only provided 1.9 billion, not 2.2 billion, to Arroyo. I don't see any congressperson na may ganun ka laking increase. I, I don't uh, agree na nabubusan ng proyekto ang distrito ng Pampanga. But according to Makabayan Bloc, budget insertions are common among lawmakers. In fact, according to ACT Teachers Party List Representative Antonio Tino, insertions are such more massive among senators. Hindi lang sa Kongreso or House of Representatives nangyayari yan. Sa Senate din, nagkakaroon ng uh, 
mas malaki pa nga ang mga insertions. But Zamora maintains that the budget allocation to each of the congressmen are depends on the needs of their respective districts. We made sure that there is an equitable distribution to the districts. So we say this, equitable, hindi naman equal distribution, but of course based on the needs ng ating mga, based on the needs ng ating mga distrito. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Malacanang, meanwhile, assures the Duterte administration will not allow the national budget to be used in corruption following allegations on the pork battle insertions. The palace also believes House leaders and certain lawmakers should be made to explain on the alleged realignment of billions of pesos worth of projects to their respective districts. Rosalie Cos tells us why. House Speaker Gloria Arroyo and other congressmen should make a clarification on the funds that were allegedly realigned to their districts in the House version of the 2019 proposed national budget, according to Malacanang. This is following negative reactions from different quarters on the alleged existence of pork battle in the 2019 proposed budget. On Wednesday, Senator Panfilo Lacson bared a list of what he believes are inserted pork battle funds in the 3.575 trillion pesos budget transmitted from the Congress, including billions of pesos allocated to the projects in the districts of two certain lawmakers. I think we should ask uh, the speaker why the allocation is that large as compared to others. The fact that some quarters are reacting, it behooves those who are involved in the realignment to respond to the protests of some elements of society. However, Malacanang reiterates it is a different issue if the realignment can be justified. The official also assures the government will not allow any forms of corruption. If the speaker or whoever is the one involved in that realignment can justify why there is a need to place that kind of amount in that particular area. And the other areas do not need that, then could, that could be justified. But if the other areas need that kind of money and you're depriving them of that, then there's something wrong with that. Malacanang is also confident that President Duterte won't allow the budget proposal of his administration to be used in corruption. It is also possible for the president to veto line items in the proposed budget when necessary. The president can always use veto power if he feels that there is a need for that. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. A consumer group claims that not all supermarkets in Metro Manila are compliant to the suggested retail price released by the Department of Trade and Industry. Let's find out why from Monoxon. Consumer group Laban Consumer made rounds in some supermarkets in Metro Manila earlier to check if they are strictly following the consumer price guide that was issued by the Department of Trade and Industry. The DTI has recently ordered to adjust the retail prices of canned sardines from 40 to 80 centavos and loaf bread from 1 peso for 400 grams to 2 pesos per 500 grams. DTI explained this is due to an increase in the price of tamban fish that reached up to 32 pesos per kilogram while the price of loaf bread has dropped. But according to Laban Consumer President Vic Dimagiba, not all supermarkets have adjusted their prices based on the inspection they conducted. A popular brand of bread that announced to slash its prices by 5 pesos has yet to make good of its promise, while some branded cancer deans are priced 75 centavos to 1 peso and 30 centavo higher than the DTI suggested retail price. Yan yung mahina yung implementasyon ng DTI dahil yung inannounce na rollback sa Pinapay, eh dito, old price pa rin, mataas pa rin ng 2 pesos and 1 peso. Dapat yun, pag-announce, implemented na para ramdam na agad ng consumer. Malacanang has expressed optimism Wednesday that local commodity prices will soon go down after the country's inflation rate subsided to 6% in November. 
This is lower than the 6.7% inflation rate reported by the Philippine Statistics Authority in October 2018. Some consumers, however, feel otherwise. Parang ganun pa rin kasi mula noon, eh, wala naman pagbabago. Na, Nakaraan taon sa ngayon. Ayawan ko lang kasi ngayon nabili namin mahal. Tumaas. Sabi kasi mga baba na daw. Hindi eh, tumataas. Siguro yung iba, yung dati, ganun eh, pero tumataas na yung lahat. DTI has previously warned supermarket owners to follow the suggested retail price. And even if the agency has no authority in setting product prices, supermarket owners should still follow the price adjustment order, especially if the manufacturers themselves have promised to do so. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. Customers of the Manila Electric Company or Meralco won't see an increase on their electricity billings this month as a lower wholesale electricity spot market prices may offset generation charges. While it has yet to receive billings from its suppliers, Meralco expects a flat generation rate from last month according to Meralco spokesperson Joe Zaldariaga. Meralco also expects power rates to go down by January of 2019 due to adjustments in the outage allowance of power plants and a plummeting world oil prices. Aside from premature campaigning and other election law violations, the Commission on Elections is also closely monitoring possible cases of vote buying ahead of the 2019 midterm elections. Here's why from Ico Miguel. The Commission on Elections is intensifying its watch against vote buying and other election law violations as the 2019 midterm elections draw closer. According to Comelec spokesperson Director James Jimenez, they are coordinating with the Philippine National Police and other groups to monitor cases of vote buying. Comelec admits that monitoring vote buying cases is a difficult task as it has several forms. Aside from cash, the poll body says giving of foods such as uncooked rice or grocery items and other materials can become a form of vote buying if these are too valuable. Vote buying uh, remains a problem, but but uh, over the last two elections, we've been making some advances um, dahil nakikipag-ugnayan tayo sa PNP at sa mga local groups. No? Yung mga local groups ngayon ang pinanggagalingan ng mga report na kuha natin. Jimenez says they have received reports in the past elections on politicians giving away sacks of vegetables, rice and other items in exchange for votes. Value for value. Mag-offer sila sa iyo ng something of value, kapalit, yung ibibigay mo, yung mahalaga mong boto. Uh, lugi kayo doon, kahit ano mangyari. Bakit? Kasi kung binigyan kayo ng, kahit sabihin mo ng limang libong worth of something, limang libo lang yan, hindi tatagal yan. Pero yung serbisyo na mawawala sa inyo dahil binigay niyo sa taong walang pakialam sa kapakanan ninyo, tatlong taon niyong iindahin yun. At kung minalas-malas kayo, baka ang pumalit sa kanya, kamag-anak pa niya. Jimenez also says other politicians are even using government services to convince their constituents to vote in their favor. We've also had cases of vote buying where what was being promised was insurance cards. Uh, and, and in some cases, membership in government dole-out programs. Those are particularly disturbing. The poll body urges the public to report and file a complaint if they witness cases of vote buying in their respective areas. Vote buying is an election offense and a candidate found guilty of such violation may face disqualification, imprisonment of up to six years, and will be deprived of their suffrage rights according to Comelec. The poll body also advises political hopefuls to avoid engaging in illegal activities such as bribing Comelec employees to help their candidacy. Huwag kayong magpapadala doon sa mga nagsasabi sa inyo na meron silang inside man or paraan para maayos yung halalan kapalit ng pera nyo. No? Huwag kayong magpapaloko dyan sa mga, mga con man na yan kasi wala pong ganyang klaseng solusyon. Hindi nila kayang uh, pasukin yung sistema natin. Aside from vote buying, Comelec is also keeping an eye on premature campaigning ahead of the start of the election period. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. 
Filipino fans of Danish band Michael Learns to Rock, especially in Luzon, are set for a series of enjoyable and music-filled nights this December. Leslie Lungbowen tells us why. Danish band Michael Learns to Rock arrived yesterday in Manila from their show in Davao. The soft rock band is here for its series of concerts in the country. We never met our fans there that we could feel they've been there for a long time and we were so happy to finally make it there and the show was really great. People were singing and having a lot of fun. It was August of last year when MLTR held its last concert in the country and performed as well for the wishers aboard the Wish Bus. Among their classic hits is That's Why You Go Away. But I'm not the man Your heart is missing That's why you go MLTR also performed their chart-topping single, The Actor. Yeah, I'm not an actor, I'm not a star. I'm not an even half my own car. The band is holding their concert tonight at the Santa Rosa Sports Coliseum in Laguna. They will also perform at the Waterfront Hotel Ballroom in Cebu tomorrow and at the Smart Araneta Coliseum on December 9. That's why you go away, I know. Leslie Lombowan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on Y News. DOJ asks a Davao court to issue a whole departure order against Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. The Commission on Human Rights raises concern over President Duterte's harsher drug war. And Camp Top Zuzara's first batch of Wishcovery's battle to earn a spot in the next round of Wishcovery Season 2. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Y News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamor, Camera. Good evening. Welcome back to Wine News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III. Here are the headlines. Kasi sa Saligang Batas. Only in cases of actual invasion or rebellion. Uh, hindi po kasama dito yung tiyatawag na lawless violence. The Commission on Human Rights believes extending the mars martial law in Mindanao is no longer necessary. Lumad leaders willing to take the witness stand against former lawmaker Saturo Campo and 17 others who were accused of kidnapping Lumad school children. And the number of human trafficking victims in the Philippines jumps to over 700,000 according to the latest Global Slavery Index report. President Rodrigo Duterte reveals he recently went to a hospital to have his blood tested during the Labor Department's 85th anniversary celebration this afternoon. Duterte even showed the part of his arm where blood was taken from him. When asked why the president had, had his blood checked, presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said it was just a regular blood testing process. hospital, eh, Oh, yung media, magtatanong naman ang sakit ko. Well, I'll give you an idea. Tanggalin ko na lang to. Ayan. Ang may dugo konti. Pero, pag walang lalabas, puro hangin. President Rodrigo Duterte is still studying the proposal to extend the implementation of martial law in Mindanao for another year, according to Malacanang. 
but for the Commission on Human Rights, placing the region under the military rule is no longer necessary. Ray Pelayo tells us why. The Commission on Human Rights is not convinced that an extension of martial law in Mindanao is necessary at this point. CHR Chairperson Chito Gascon says they have been opposing the imposition of martial law in the region because they believe that the power of the president is enough to solve the problems of terrorism in the country. Kasi nakalagay sa saligang batas, only in cases of actual invasion or rebellion. No? Uh, hindi po kasama dito yung tinatawag na lawless violence. At uh, patuloy po kami uh, nanindigan na sa extensions nito ay hindi rin kailangan. CHR spokesperson attorney Jacqueline Deguia also believes the government troops are fully equipped for the job and extension of martial law is no longer necessary. Gascon, meanwhile, stresses that the situation at present is different compared with the martial law during the regime of the late President Ferdinand Marcos in terms of intention. Nevertheless, the CHR vows to be vigilant in monitoring for possible violations of human rights along the way. For his part, former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay fears the extension of martial law may only be utilized by people with much interest for charter change. So it's exactly the same story that we had during Marcos's time, no? that martial law can be used as a tool to expedite charter change. But Malacanang clarifies that the proposal to extend the implementation of martial law in Mindanao region remains under study by President Rodrigo Duterte. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Justice has asked the Davao Court to issue a whole departure order against Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. According to Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara, they have filed a motion before the Davao Regional Trial Court and is set to be heard tomorrow. The motion stemmed from a libel case and other complaints filed by presidential son Paulo Duterte against Trillanes after the latter accused him and his brother-in-law Attorney Manasses Scarpio of extorting money from Uber and other ride-sharing firms. A Makati court has earlier allowed the opposition senator to travel abroad for various activities including speaking engagements. It just so happens that there are other cases pending against Senator Trillanes, some uh, for inciting to sedition all right, and some for libel. These are pending elsewhere in other regional trial courts. And the prosecution uh, has the right to uh, file a motion uh, for the issuance of a whole departure order. The Commission on Human Rights raises concerns over President Rodrigo Duterte's promise of a harsher war against illegal drugs. Duterte on Wednesday said he will be harsh and there will be widespread violence as he tries to end the drug menace in the country along with the military and police. The CHR urged the Duterte administration to uphold the rule of law and respect human rights as part of its obligation to the Filipino people. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission is set to conduct its own investigation on the 6.8 billion peso shabu shipment that slipped by the Bureau of Customs. The commission also questions the committee's recommendation to clear former Customs Commissioner Isidro La Peña of any charges relating to the controversy. Joanna tells us why. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission expresses dissatisfaction over the result of the inquiry conducted by the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee on the 6.8 billion peso shabu shipment in the Bureau of Customs. Though the Commission respects the Senate Committee's recommendations on the issue, PACC Chairman Dante Jimenez says they will conduct their own investigation on the matter. The PACC will form a fact-finding committee to identify individuals responsible for the smuggling of billions worth of illegal drugs in the country. Namin dito kulang. So, hindi kami nagmamarunong, uh, but we will exhaust all effort. And I will not allow this just like that na sarado na. 
Aside from the BOC and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, the PACC will also invite officials from the Philippine Coast Guard, Maritime Industry Authority, Philippine Ports Authority, as well as other government agencies. The PACC will also tap former BOC District Collector Attorney Lourdes Mangawang to help in the investigation. Mangawang has previously accused former Customs Commissioner Isidro La Peña of having information about the Shabu shipment that was smuggled through several magnetic lifters. This is why the PACC questions the decision of the Blue Ribbon Committee to clear La Peña of charges. Actually, medyo hindi ako masyadong nagulat ng kinir si Gordo dahil may naba ah, si kinir si La Peña, may nababalitaan na ako noon pa na pinagyayabang sa part ng mga tao ni, ni General La Peña na allegedly ayos na raw ayos na raw na nakausap na allegedly Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chairman Richard Gordon has yet to comment on the statement of the PACC Joan Nano UNTV News and Rescue Manila The tribal leaders of Mindanao are ready to testify should the Philippine National Police file a case against Act Teachers Party List Representative Franz Castro former Makabayan representative Saturo Campo and 16 others. Here's why from Kathy Maglalang. Kami handa na mag-witness kung ang kapulisan sila ay mag-file ng kaso against sa kanila ni Saturo Campo at saka yung act representative na si Francis. This was the statement of Lipatuan Joel Unad, chairman of Mindanao Indigenous People's Council of Elders and Leaders, regarding the human trafficking raps filed against former lawmaker Satur Ocampo, Act Teachers Party List Representative Franz Castro and 16 others. Ocampo and his colleagues were arrested by authorities on November 29 for allegedly holding 14 minors without the consent of the parents in Talaingot, Davao del Norte. They were later released after posing a bail of 80,000 pesos for each respondent. Ocampo has denied allegations they abducted the school children, insisting that they are only rescuing the minors from the Salugpongan Community School for Lumad that were allegedly being harassed by the military. But according to Salugpongan student Magdalena Gano, the New People's Army have long been recruiting children in different communities to reinforce their ranks. Young 12 pataas. May grupo na, tinawag na SKM sa mahang kabataan makabayan. Ako, ako din yung sekretary nila. Uh, at saka ako din yung nag-recruit nag ng mga bata na ibang-ibang lugar. Dali namin yung mga bata doon, doon namin paralin. At saka yung nag na ng 18, kukunin ng mga MPA, ipapuntay. The group claims... Luma children in their area were even taught a bastardized version of the Philippine National Anthem. Bayang mahiwaga sa malayong silangan, alat ng puso sa dapit mo'y buhay, lupang sinera, bayan ng magigiting. Lumad learners were also allegedly taught how to operate and dismantle guns and to fight soldiers. Due to these reports, the tribal leaders have decided to sign a resolution ordering the closure of all Salugpongan schools in their areas. They also threatened to launch a tribal war against the communist rebels if the government fails to solve the matter. Kapag hindi ito masol within one year, or under sa administration ni PRRD. Bukod nandiyan pa rin yung CPPNP ang tribu magdeklar ng pangayon. Oh, tribal war. Oh. Meanwhile, the military maintains that Ocampo and Castro have links to the communist rebels. This goes to show that the activities of Ocampo and Castro in Talaingod is part of a bigger machinery and scheme involving what the CPPNPA has dubbed as Lumad Schools. The military is currently working with the Department of Education to probe allegations that the communist group is using Lumad Schools to recruit more members. Kathy Maglalang, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazon City. The Department of Justice calls on the international community to unite to protect the poor after the 2018 Global Slavery Index report indicated a spike in the number of Filipinos who fell victim to human trafficking. My Bermudez tells us why. 
The 2018 Global Slavery Index report shows a significant rise in the number of victims of human trafficking in the Philippines. One of the most notable was the incident of 13 minors, including a two-month-old baby, who were trafficked by their own relatives and were rescued in March last year by the operatives of the National Bureau of Investigation with the help of personnel from the U.S. Homeland Security Investigators and Immigration and the Customs Enforcement Team. Specifically, the minors were used to promote child pornography. Masakit dahil ang, ang mga perpetrators are mga magulang eh, at, at mga relatives. So sino pa ang pagkakatiwalaan ng mga kabataan natin ngayon kung even ang magulang nila is kinakalakal sila. Their case is just one of the more than 700,000 victims of human trafficking based on the report. This puts the Philippines in the 12th rank among the countries with the highest incidence of modern-day slavery in the entire Asia-Pacific. The report notes that among the 40 million people trafficked across the globe, 73% were victims of forced sexual exploitation, 68% were victims of forced labor, 64% were victims of labor exploitation, while 42% were led to forced marriages. It is no wonder that slavery has broken the very fabric of nations. It has destroyed families and communities and brought war to even the mightiest of economies. The inherent injustice in building fortunes from the misfortune of some presents one of the strongest compulsion for the abolition of slavery. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice takes pride in the rescue of a nine-year-old girl and the arrest of her French pedophile perpetrator who spread lewd photographs online. This information was transmitted to the Philippines and Australia and was subsequently corroborated by the Philippine National Police Women and Children Protection Center. Guevara added that four months after the trial and nine months after the rescue of the child, a conviction for qualified trafficking was handed down by our courts, referring to the success of the case. Guevara, meanwhile, calls on the international community to unite to protect the poor who are the most susceptible to human trafficking. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Last night's first elimination round was a challenging one for composer Wishcover, top Suzara of Wishcovery Season 2, The Singer and the Song. Leslie Longbowen tells us why. The first batch of Wishcoveries of Camp Top Suzara battled against each other last night in Wishcovery Season 2, The Singer and the Song. The group was composed of Cebuanos with unique voices and styles. Febi Olores delivered an emotionally charged rendition of Tunay na Mahal. very comfortable singing it. So very good, very good. Oh, I, we just don't know if it's good enough. Congratulations to you. I enjoyed you. your singing. Owning the song Iisa Palamang was Winsel Selma. Tsaka ngayon ko lang narinig talaga yung kanta na yan in that style of singing. Hindi siya yung traditional, di ba? Medyo parang makabagong klase ng pagkanta eh. Meanwhile, Sofia Dagandan gives a feel-good vibe with her performance of Ako Na Lang. Sino-sino pang pinatawagan? I saw you were having fun. 
Own it lang, di ba? Be in the mood of your song. Nice, nice, nice. Sophia failed to advance to the next round but was still thankful to Wish Covery. Maraming salamat po sa Wish Covery dahil na discover ko sa self ko na I can do better. After Camp Top, Wish Coveries from Mindanao under Camp Venny Satuno will engage in an intense vocal battle at 9.30 p.m. tonight on Wish 1075 YouTube channel. Leslie Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Up next on the Y News, Huawei's Global Chief Financial Officer arrested in Canada. First zero, zero waste street soon to be inaugurated in Paris, France. And self driving taxis go into business in Arizona, USA. Those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Y News returns with William Theo. I'm Angelo Castro III. Good evening.